Well, hello there. Welcome to our unbirthday party. <laughs> For your safety, please be sure to stay listening with your hands, arms, feet, and ears inside the podcast. And please, do give Peg and Teresa easier trivia questions. Hmm? Well, it seems DL Weekly is about to begin. Have a most wonderful time. Perhaps tea time. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Eric Johnson with Concy Ears, and welcome to the D180. While Teg and Teresa cover all things Disneyland, in the D180 we take a spin around the rest of the Disney universe, and we do it in 180 seconds. Let's jump right in! We start our journey in Walt Disney World, and, spoiler alert, we end there also. There's just so much going on, I'm, I'm not sure I can contain myself to three minutes either, so uh, I guess hold on tight everybody. We'll start out with a bit of long-term planning. If you ever wanted to visit Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party, now is the time to think about your vacation plans. Tickets went on sale April 27th for folks with a current Walt Disney World Resort stay planned. If you don't have a trip on the books yet, get ready for ticket sales on May 2nd. And by Disney Resort, I mean the main resorts that are officially run by Disney, but also a few others. If you stay at the Swan or Dolphin Resorts or Disney's Shades of Green Resort, you can also access early tickets. I understand that one of those names might sound unfamiliar. Shades of Green began its life as the Golf Resort and then became the Disney Inn. It rests a short distance away from the Polynesian off of the monorail loop. In 1996, the U.S. military purchased the resort and ever since it's been operated as an armed forces recreation center. The resort is kind of mysterious because most people don't know about it, but the general public can go there for dinner. It's just that you can't uh, book a room there. Only the U.S. military can. Kind of cool, right? Dates for the Halloween event at the Magic Kingdom start in August and run through November 1st. Spooky season lasts quite a while in the Florida resorts, so you have plenty of chances to join in the fun. Now for something a bit closer in time, like now era. The Star Wars events kick off at the parks starting May 1st. For the entire month of May, Star Wars-y, and, and yes, that is a real word, look it up, Star Wars-y treats abound around the resorts, but mostly at Hollywood Studios. Hollywood Studios is home to Galaxy's Edge, so this makes sense. At several locations, you will find the new Acid Spitter Orb Sipper, an homage to an obscure reference in the Tales from Galaxy's Edge VR game. There are plenty more treats around, though. The most exciting bites are returning favorites. Docking Bay 7 returns to its Oi Oi Puffs, which are raspberry cream puffs with passion fruit mousse. They're a cool purple color, and I would love to sink my teeth into that sugary goodness. Even more toothsome is the much-anticipated return of the Wookiee Cookie. This treat harkens back to the days of the Star Wars weekends when Galaxy's Edge was just a twinkle in our eyes. Two giant oatmeal cookies stuffed with vanilla cream and topped with Chewy's signature bandolier made of chocolate. I think the only improvement would be ice cream, but uh, I don't know. What do I know? Sticking with that theme, now even more people can enjoy up to 30% off of their voyage on the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. First, Disney Vacation Club owners got access, and then Walt Disney World annual pass holders. Now, Disney Visa card holders, which are a much larger group, will receive 30% off of their voyages. Not every voyage is eligible, but dates begin May 1st and run all the way through September 16th. Is there any non-Star Wars news? Sure, I guess. I know what you've been thinking. When will Disney 100 reach the Walt Disney World Resort? The answer is soon. Much of the celebration will take place at Epcot, featuring Mickey, Minnie, and their friends in their purple and platinum best. The popular light shows on Spaceship Earth, started for the Walt Disney World 50th and Epcot 40th celebrations, will continue with the Disney 100 themes. And that's 180 seconds. I hope you enjoyed our quick spin around the rest of the Disney universe. If you'd like to learn more about these Disney adventures or just have a few questions, please come on over. Visit the social media and websites of both DL Weekly and us, their official travel planners, Concy Ears. We look forward to planning something special for you and yours. 
I'm Eric Johnson, and this has been your D180. Well, hello, Weekly Tears. We are coming to you from Buena Vista Street. We are pretty excited. We're sitting here right across from my favorite place, the Animation Academy. Which we just drew Grogu We did. So we are coming to, it is Tuesday, May 2nd, and it is our second day in the parks. Man, yesterday was interesting because Teresa, throughout the day, was saying, it's only our first day because we've gone through so it, much stuff already. It does. It feels like we've been here like a week already because we've gotten does. so many things done. We've been having such a fun time. Yes. And we want to give a special shout out to all of our listeners and especially all of our supporters on Patreon. Because of all of your love, generosity, and support, we are here. We are recording on brand new microphones that we are able to get with your support. So we appreciate you all so, so very much. This is amazing. Yeah. You're amazing. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. And we had our meetup on Sunday. Um, yes. Kind of going out of order here a little bit, but we had our meetup and met so, a bunch of new of you. A lot of times when we've done these meetups, there's been a lot of the same people over the last couple of years, which is wonderful. But it was cool because we had some new faces this time. Which is always fun. Yeah. We love meeting new people. We met our youngest listener who's we been did. listening since they were born. <laughs> yes, we did. We so, did. So super cool there. Uh, we uh, enjoyed the Earl of Sandwich which was a great venue as always it for was. meetups. It was. The only kind of weird thing was we had to, the birds apparently really enjoyed the tree that's there. So if you go to Earl of Sandwich, just be careful where you sit. You might want to make sure you wipe stuff down because, yeah, it was that was the only like setback. But they had, even though it was evening time and it's kind of chilly here in Southern California, but they had nice patio heaters and all that stuff. So the meetup was fantastic. It is, as we were recording this at about six o'clock, on Tuesday, like Teresa said, Tuesday the 2nd, it is 62 degrees according to my watch right now. And there's a little bit of a breeze. So uh, breeze? the breeze makes and it... it's overcast? Yeah. And but I will the- say, it has been perfect, in my opinion, theme park weather. It is. Because it's been just a little chilly, but you want that when you're going to be walking around and standing mm-hmm. in line, the mm-hmm. sun's blaring. Mm-hmm. So it's been really, really great. Downtown Disney, we went on our first day on Sunday, which was a long day for us. We got up, what did you say, the equivalent of like 1 a.m.? Yeah, it was 1.30 California time when we got up to get ready to then make make it over to the airport to catch our plane. So we had a very long day Sunday, but it was it was worthwhile. Yeah. It was fun. Plane went fine. Uh, we got here. We flew into Long Beach for the first time, which Long Beach was fun. I checked really a nice bucket airport. list off, which Teresa probably thought was weird. <laughs> uh, I have always wanted to exit a plane not through the jetway and actually off like some kind of a staircase. And that is Long Beach for you if you've never flown into Long Beach. It was a little bit further away than Santa Ana, but it was enjoyable. It was really nice. Yeah. Some of it's like outdoors. Yeah. It's very Southern California. Yeah, it was really nice. After that, we went and checked into our hotel over at the Howard Johnson because you all know how much we love staying at the Hojo. By the way, the manager that checked us in, super friendly, yes, chatted friendly. with us for quite a while. Very fun. Yes, we enjoyed it speak with him and he created some magic for us because by some miracle they had a room already available for us even though was we this were like 10 30 a.m or we something we were there very very early we were not expecting a room to we were just expecting to drop our luggage off and just kind of hang out around downtown disney but somehow there was a room so that was an unexpected very pleasant surprise yeah. so we were able to kind of wind down shower get settled in before we then headed off to lunch at of course our favorite place outside of the parks, Lay's. Yeah, which is great as always. So I don't know if I've ever talked about this on the podcast, but something I just want to say real quick was I always get, they have roasted garlic, and I always tell the people to put an unhealthy amount of garlic on there. And usually they do a pretty good job. This guy was like a whole fistful of roasted garlic, and it was amazing. After Blaze, we walked over (laughs) um, to downtown Disney, kind of just did some shopping, walked through World of Disney. I was overwhelmed. So much new merchandise. So much new merchandise, yes. So much, and good good new merchandise i feel like we've been talking about merch a lot more than we normally or had been in the past because there's just so much good stuff so it makes it really hard to figure out what you want to pick up my favorite stuff that i've seen thus far is the eras collection that has all sorts of kind of old school walt disney studios stuff that i'm very very excited about and i'm trying to figure out how i can fit in my little suitcase to bring home one of the things that i saw that i really enjoyed from the merchandise was but i'm not going to buy for me but they have this Mando helmet, which oh, yeah. which I think is really cool. Also, I've seen a lot of people walk around with it. I don't think they sell it at the resort here, but they had a shoulder hey hey, which I'm I on the lookout like for. I they did sell it. They probably sold out because it's hey yeah. hey, and he's but, amazing. But they have a shoulder 
tuck tuck. Oh, they have a shoulder tuck tuck. There was a shoulder Sebastian. There was a shoulder Alebrije. I、mm. thought that was great. Well, you wanted me to get the Alebrije one、mm-hmm. since they didn't have Hey Hey, but but yeah, so that was great. We did our live streams. We did one live stream. We just kind of hung out by the Star Wars trading post, and then for that was our support. That was our support hangout. hangout, and then for our stream, we actually went and hung out in the Grand Californian for a little bit and checked out the cool food display. There, we always love the food displays. We were very proud of ourselves. For those of you that watched the live stream, we found four of the five hidden Mickey's during the live stream when we walked through the lobby to leave the Grand Californian. We found the fifth. So、you all, found the fifth. All five hidden Mickey's have been found. They were they were hidden really well. Yeah.、Uh, we also enjoyed a Wookie cookie during the live stream, and that is actually found at the the treat. The holiday cart. Yeah, the, it's like the holiday cart in the Grand Californian lobby.、Uh, you know, it was on a scale of five. I'd probably give it like a three. It was good. It was a cookie. Like, I concur was, with that. It was like a cho- like a really good chocolate chip cookie. If I had like milk. milk It would have been perfect, and it was there was a Nutella filling in the center of it, but it was nine dollars. I it, I don't think it was worth nine dollars, but it it wasn't bad either. So、yeah. it was kind of middle of the road. I, I wouldn't get it again. I don't think it was worth nine dollars. It was pretty good. I, like you said, milk would have been nice with it, but it was it was something neat and it was, it was original.、Funny. So we finished up that, and then what did we do? We went and kind of we had dinner. Yep. And then we had our meet up, and then we went to bed. We tried to go to bed early since we were up so so late, so that we could. Hit the ground running for our first day in the parks, which we got surprised, or at least I did anyway. Because usually when we arrive at the parks, there's at least some type of line for security. But both mornings now we're on our second day. We didn't really wait hardly at all in any、oh. line for security, and we got into the park pretty quick. Yeah, the crowd levels have been really, really nice in the morning. Even now, as we're sitting here, it's 6 p.m. We're sitting in, on Hollywood Boulevard. The trolley is going up and down with no problems. It's It's been a really magical, really enjoyable trip. Yesterday was our first again, first day at Disneyland. We were the plan was to rope drop, go to the left, go hit up Indy because we needed to see all these yes updated and refreshed effects with our own eyes. But of course, we get over there and Indy's closed, so we decided to take a trip on the Jungle Cruise instead. And then as soon as we got off, Indy was up. We had Carl. Yes, we had Skipper Carl. Carl. We've had him before. I think、and、we had him in December.、He's、he was amazing. He's he was amazing. He's he really buys into the deadpan、yes. of Jungle, the Jungle Cruise, and it was great. But, but like Teresa said, we got oh, go ahead. So many jokes that you haven't heard. Like he's got he sprinkles in ones that you've heard if you've if、the、you're、classics. a frequent traveler of Jungle Navigation Company <laughs> that you've heard. But he's got so many. Above and beyond that, he's constantly, entire time, he's constantly talking, telling jokes. Yeah, it's yeah. Great. So、he's、we so came、good. out, and Indy had reopened. By the way, that's the red car trolley in the background. If you heard that ding ding, we got to go on it. We waited almost no time,、mm-hmm. and every everything, everything, every effect was working for us.、Yeah. The 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 ra- the boulder room at the end. The new effects were working great. The snake, the snake was working. The new projection. It was great. I really liked the new. This is going to sound really silly, but it's the scene where you, the first scene you see in the where he's trying to like close the door. This is this is a weird thing, and it kind of always bothered me. They had it was kind of like a draped fabric that kind of was blowing in the wind. Was what was behind the door? There's like a, a screen or projection behind there now. It looks so so much better. I forgot、so、much more to mention that. Yeah, it,、so、it looks way better now. One of the things that had been sad the last couple times we had ridden Indy was, I kind of stopped wanting to ride it because I was very sad at the state it had become,、mm-hmm. and I was so happy that it was back to a fully functioning state. Now I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but today we rode Radiator Springs Racers, and it was the same thing. I, everything worked. I was gonna say it, it, it's not just Indy; everything that we've worked that's been needing needing a little bit extra TLC. Everything. Oh, pirates, pirates too. Was yeah. Working, everything that we've noticed, there hasn't been anything like super obvious, like in, anything that's kind of out of the normal. Because of course, like Small World, there's always going to be maybe a, a doll that's getting worked on and switched well, out. Well, there's hundreds you know, like, you know, of dolls. Like, there's there. always like little things, but all of the big major things that kind of make the attraction what the attraction is have been working, which is just. Wild. It's been a really great from from that standpoint. It's been an amazing trip for、mm-hmm. us to have all of that. So of course, after we got off of Indy, we went over and were able to get on Pirates. We kind of just kept 
the west side yep. flowing. Uh, again, pirates, everything was working really wonderfully. We went over to the Haunted Mansion after that, mm -hmm. and we were able to get right on that, and that was a great experience. Basically, to sum it up, the only attractions we did not ride in Disneyland our first day was Splash Mountain, Winnie the Pooh, and Fantasyland. The only thing we did in Fantasyland was Small World. Um, but did other we, than that... We didn't ride the subs or the monorail. Or, or the subs or the monorail. But other than that, everything We did was hit open, everything, didn't we? We hit. And no train. No train either. But I mean... Talk about a successful first Yeah, we did Mickey day. and Minnie's Runaway Railway, which was wonderful. Oh, come on. Can we... T okay, let's talk about Toontown. Yes. So, this is embarrassing, but I'm going to tell everybody about it anyway. So, No, I think this makes it better. We were going into Toontown, and we had stopped. We were waiting a couple of weekly tiers. We're going to meet up and head into Toontown with us. So, I was taking that moment to actually post an update to show off where I had hidden one of our little giveaway pins. So... But they, I wasn't fast enough. They got over to us. So I was doing the thing you don't do in Disneyland. I was looking at my phone, finishing up the post before I could post it. I had, I think, Vern or Tag or Jay, somebody was in front of me. So I kept, like, them in my peripheral and, like, was right behind them to make sure I didn't bump into anybody. I was basically into Toontown before I finally looked up from my phone. Vern laughed at me so hard. You were, like, you, oh, I was following Vern because you were far enough up. Yep. Because I just, like, stop. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, I just, it, like, it blew me away. It looks so good. You want to talk about effects working? All of the fun little, like, gags gags are working. Oh, it looks so good. Like, I want to be in Toontown now. It looks, it's yeah. so, so fun. I kept asking everybody in our group. I said, when do you think, did you ever think that you would say that Toontown was packed or someplace yeah. you wanted to be again? And it is. Now, things that I observed that I thought was 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 amazing. First of all, the grass area where people could sit, amazing. Mm -hmm. All the effects, like Teresa said, amazing. Mm -hmm. The old Jolly Trolley barn, they've opened up and stroller parking. Brilliant. Which, brilliant, wow. Brilliant, brilliant. Roger Rabbit was great. We went on that a little bit later, but Roger Rabbit was great. The El Capitoon looks amazing. The queue is so it's incredible huge and so many details i was sad that like the, that the line was moving as well as it was because there was just so much to look at when do you think you'd ever complain about the line moving I know, well i know i know it just gives me another reason to go back though right there were a ton of details in there it was done beautifully now we've seen a lot of things online of, of little effects people too. people you know breaking off parts yeah. but all of that was fixed they've been really on top of it even some of the stuff we've seen about the dreaming tree and some of the uh, oh, branches right, and stuff, like all of that looked really mm -hmm, good. Mm -hmm. um, Teresa actually went and rode the slide. I did. I went in uh, Goofy's play, how to play yard. We were we were being big kids at heart and playing around. And yes, I even went down one of the slides. It was very fun. It is much louder when an adult goes down that slide than the children. But other than right. that, very very fun. So and you know what? Nobody even gave me like a weird look for doing it. No. I just knew I was having fun, but so good. I just, it's so bright and so vibrant. The colors are popping. It's Toontastic. Yeah. Yeah. They did a really amazing job and uh, I can definitely see Toontown being a place that I'd go to kind of relax even mm -hmm. because there's so many places to sit. There's some grass areas. There were a lot of people just kind of lay in there. It was yeah. doing exactly what it should have done. All the kids were playing and having a great time mm -hmm. and and everything, and so it really, really, they, they did a top-notch, amazing job. Um, so did. hats off to all the Imagineers who worked on it. Of course, Mickey Minnie's Runway Railway was amazing. We had been on it out in Florida. The difference, though, was uh, we went during the height of COVID, and they didn't have the pre-show, so we get to see the pre-show for the first time, and I'm not going to give anything away, but the pre-show is awesome. The pre-show is very, very good. The other thing, too, that we've just really been fortunate with is dining i don't know how the disney the disney powers that be the disney winds are smiling upon us this trip because we were able tag was able to snag last minute reservations for us for blue bayou last night so we ate at blue bayou haven't been to blue bayou in a really very long time and it was a little sad because there wasn't a fantastic dining package for us no. to do because fantastic of oh, course yes, is not running yes. the other thing too to update on that is the scrims are still up around the stage area so they are still working and trying to figure stuff out. Still nothing that we've seen as far as any sort of official statement from Disney as to what happened. So I, I'm going to assume they're still investigating and still trying to figure out how to put Murphy to, to rest. So, yeah. So that was that was sad to see that. That was honestly, I like had to stop walking because 
I was kind of hoping the scrims would be gone when we were here, just so that I wouldn't pretend have to it be, didn't happen. Yeah, so I wouldn't have to like think about it. But as soon as we walked around, and I saw that up. It just you know my heart sunk. So hopefully, maybe maybe soon they'll they'll be able to figure out and get things at least back back to where they could operate in B mode for it. I, it won't be during our trip. I don't no. think. But yeah, so. The More to um, come on that. the Adventureland Treehouse is coming along nicely. I'm a lot of the stuff they have is down. The scrims down for that. You can see a ton of that. Yeah, it was. It looks like it's coming along nicely. Obviously, it looks like they still need to install the water feature, mm -hmm. and there's some other things that need to be done. But it was nice to see some progress on that. It's not just yeah. a wall of scrims. Yes, yes, exactly. uh, in the way. Oh, but back to dining. So Blue Bayou, fantastic. I was really happy. It I was know. so funny because James and Vern got one dish, the same dish, <laughs> they did. and Teresa and I got the same dish, so it was and kind of even funny. even more embarrassing, we got the exact same drink, so we yes. were real, real excited. We did get different desserts, though. Tag and I both enjoyed the filet. Oh, we enjoyed the filet. Melt in your mouth. Melt in your mouth. The so mashed tender. potatoes with it were kind of spicy. It was a little kick to those um, mashed potatoes. So I kind of used it as like a horseradish on my steak, and it was really good. Mm -hmm. The uh, honeyed carrots were really good. James doesn't usually eat seafood, but he had the tuna and yeah, said it was, it was really good. Yep, it was the catch of the day is what yep. James and Vern got, and it was, yeah, seared tuna with some sort of pineapple poblano or pineapple serrano. So I don't remember what it was. Pineapple, either Something. serrano or pepper sauce. I had a, a bite, and I'm not a fish person, either, but that sauce was yeah. very, very yummy. And then today, we just happened to score last-minute dining reservations for Lamplight. So, Which, by the way, shout-out to a Amy. Yes, shout-out to our amazing server, Amy. Who was really funny, because Teresa, halfway oh. through our sitting there... They, they were having some slight problems in the kitchen, so our food took a little bit to Which come out. It was fine. We were it totally, totally enjoying just sitting and relaxing. And Getting off our feet. And just sipping our drinks. It was, yeah, we were, it was totally fine. But Teresa, like, it dawned on her that she knew this person, that our server Amy, from when you were here for your honeymoon, yeah, or she, your wedding, I should she say. She was our server when I came here with my family, when Vern and I were here with our family and dined at Lamplight. She was our, she was our waitress for the evening that time and so i just remember because she d made a little magical moment for us when we were here for celebrating our wedding and it was like the day after we got married so i don't know if i told her that at the time but it was like the day after i got married so i was just so touched that she created this magical moment and it was cool because we like we told her about it and i had a picture of she had written a little like congratulations and thank you inside of our receipt folder they were doing paper folders still at that point. They didn't have the, the leather binders back. And I took a picture of that because it was just such a special memory for us. And so we very awkward, like, is this your handwriting? <laughs> and it was. So it was really cool. Yeah, so, she was great. We amazing. wrote a cast compliment for her. I talked to the we manager did. because she just really kind of made our meal. She did. Even though we had to wait, she made it feel like we didn't have to wait and was just was just exceptional kept checking in on us kept making yeah. sure our drinks were filled up even though you know things were taking a little bit longer than normal it was totally fine and she was just like just so kind and so nice the only negative if i had a negative about her was that she had to give me the unfortunate news that i missed <laughs> the cookies and cream donuts by one day yeah and we were over here for a little bit yesterday and i could have come and got them the if thing, i would have had a reservation thing, i guess but but we did have the the current donuts which is a like a hazelnut something. yeah it's like a ferrara rocher donut so it was chocolate and hazelnut those, it was good those were good it was good those are good it was a nice end to our meal i ooh, let's talk about the food i had the there's a pork belly bao bun that just started like seasonal menu item that just went on today hands down <laughs> oh my gosh the sauce on it the tenderness of the pork belly the bow the bow buns were just so fluffy and so oh, incredible so so good so if you're coming here anytime soon can't recommend those bow buns enough i had something called the slt which is like the salmon lettuce and tomato is like a burger and the fries were amazing this the sandwich they had an aioli, aioli on it, it was really mm -hmm. really good overall Amazing meal. James had the, he had the lamb chop or the pork chop. Pork chop. They had a pork chop that was really good. It El was a little pastor. spicy. Yeah, El Pastor pork chop that he really enjoyed. And then what was the other thing you guys got? And then we got the, what usually is the lobster nachos, but we substituted and got chicken and steak on the on the nachos instead. So Vern and I shared the nachos and the bun, the bow. It, yeah, amazing. So, so good. And of course I had to get a twenty three nineteen because, well. 
We both got it's a 2319. So it's such like when you read the description, it's kind of like, huh? But it works. It's a it's like a strawberry slushy with a splash of coke in it. It's good. It's so good. And there's like there's some I can't remember what I, no I feel like I should probably look at my phone before we say what it is wrong. The 2319 is a frozen mocktail made with strawberry puree, cream of coconut, and pineapple juice topped with a little bit of Coca Cola. So yeah. Like listening to the combo, it all sounds great, and then you get the, to the Coca Cola, you're like, "Huh?" I don't. It, but it works. It if works. you told me there was Coca Cola in it, which you did, and I read it, <laughs> I would not have believed you because I didn't really didn't see it. But but together, the flavor works really mm-hmm. well. So we try to think of all the other stuff we do. Oh, oh, and the bao, the bao is called Kung Pao Bao. So yummy, so 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 yummy. So uh, also at Disneyland yesterday, we went and saw the Bruno projection show again. Great as always. And Wondrous Journeys. Oh, and Magic Happens. We did. And both of those shows were things that we had not seen before. Yes. What did you think? I really, 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 really liked Magic Happens. Like, really liked Magic Happens. Can't wait to go see it again. Wondrous Journeys, I think... I don't know. I think think I'm going to hold off figuring out what I feel about it until we see it, like, with the castle. I think seeing it on the castle... And Main we saw it by Street it's a small is world. different than watching it on Small World. I really enjoyed it, but we it was just kind of and it was it, nothing against the show itself. It was just kind of a weird place for us because we were sitting, but then people kept kind of getting up and standing in front of us. So it was kind of like it, we didn't have the best view. I guess would be a good way of saying it. So, so I wasn't able to enjoy it as fully as I think we will later in the week. Magic happens. I didn't know what to expect. I actually didn't come in with any expectations. You hadn't even seen a video of Magic Happens. No, which is weird for me, right? It is very weird. I had seen clips, but I had never seen the whole show or heard really a lot of the music. Now, you t- now they did play some music at D23, but that was years ago at yeah, this that point. Was so I had already forgotten. But I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. I thought the floats were nice. I the do want to see it so good. at night. I think it would really shine at night. Yes. Um, all of the cast members that were involved in the performers did it just a really amazing, as always with the mm-hmm. parades and stuff, did a really amazing job. Now, Wondrous Journeys, I really liked Wondrous Journeys. I liked the music a lot. I liked the projections. I liked the way they weaved in all of the different music together and it didn't there, feel... Yes, there it was, was kind of a mashup. There was at one point that they layered three different Disney songs animated i think they're all animated disney songs on top of each other and it was one of those as soon as you realize what was happening you're like what are they what are they doing oh, oh my gosh this works like it oh. right and that's on paper that's towards, it shouldn't yeah, work but it's towards the middle of the show it's very very good very good so yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it again because like i said it was just for me it was a little weird because we were able to kind of be seated but standing and then kind of having to look through it was just yeah not the best and i i get a little like dug from up with Squirrel. these things anyways because there's a lot going on so I feel like I didn't really get to see all of it because there's just so much going on so I need to see it again I think I haven't seen it on a main street and I haven't seen it with fireworks but hold yourself I think Wondrous Journeys is my second favorite fireworks show after Remember Dreams gonna Come know, True you're gonna I can hold myself because I thought you were gonna say your favorite and I was no like, but what? second that's a big deal though well what was second that's a good question <laughs> The 60th anniversary show was okay. really good. Okay. But I think, no, I think that this, and, and I would even say it's 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 very close to first even. Like, I really wow. enjoyed it that much. And we'll see how good it is when we see it on Main Street and we and see it with fireworks because, mm-hmm. and we're crossing our fingers because we are here Friday. Friday is our last day in the parks. And Friday, because it's a weekend, we're supposed to have fireworks. That's the one and only time it However, might However, Sunday, there were some weekly tears here who were trying to see it Sunday night, and they canceled because of the wind. Yeah. So, fingers crossed that we get fireworks on Friday. And then in DCA today, what, what have we done? What, I'm trying to think. Trying we to, did a lot. We So, DCA, we've had a little bit different of a day today. We haven't been as go, go, go as we were yesterday. So we've ridden, let's see, we rode... Radiator Springs, Radiator Springs which everything was working. It was everything wonderful. Everything was working, and we rope dropped it, even though it was closed right at rope drop. We got, somehow just happened to kind of be lingering in the area, and it reopened, so we had, like, no wait for Radiator Springs, which was awesome. What else have we ridden? We've kind of ridden some... some we were at Soarin' Over the World, or Around Soarin'. the World. Soarin'. We, we played around in the Red Creek Challenge Trail, yep. which was super fun. James uh, made fun of me because I jumped around in, on, on the uh, thing like a small child. 
We both You did, did too, yep. yeah. It was fun. But uh, what else did we do? Oh, we did the Golden Zephyr. That was the first time I'd ever ridden the Golden Zephyr. Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid, the Emotional Whirlwinds. We did a lot of stuff that we don't we normally did do. We did a lot of, yeah. yeah and we just of kind stuff. of have been taking our time between everything, too. We also uh, ate a lot. <laughs> producers, the James and Vern are currently going and riding. What are they riding right now? The they said Incredicoaster Coaster and maybe the Pal Around. Yep, yep. So they're doing for sure the Incredicoaster. They did Guardians last night while Tag and I went over and rode Monsters Inc. It was, I don't even remember why we didn't do Guardians, but anyways. Um, because we had eaten oh, and we, we didn't want to go ride Guardians after we ate. Yep. So we did, so we did Monsters and Guardians last night. So yeah, I still, I feel like it's been a really great day today too. So even though, you know, we've taken time to do like things like the Animation Academy, which again, we just finished with and we got to draw Grogu and I didn't it was get to cool. see yours. You packed yours up before I could even see it. I will say the cast member who was leading the drawing session, she was amazing. She did a really she good job. She was super talkative. She There was a couple times where she kind of was drawing stuff but not saying it. Yeah, and yeah. I was looking at my paper. Like, Wait a minute. And then I look up and I'm like, oh, he has ears now. <laughs> like, <laughs> quick, quick, quick. Uh, yeah. But she was really great. Also, one thing I've really, really enjoyed this trip is with the Disney 100, all of the cast members oh, have yeah. their names, but then under their names, where it normally has like where they're from or something like that, they have their favorite character. Now, there's been some, we've heard from different cast members that some of them had a different character, then they've lost their name tag, and then they cha- like Disney changed the characters they could choose from, so they had characters. It's complicated, but anyway, we've been, I've been making a point to every cast member I see to see what the character is, and it can be hard, it's tinier print, mm-hmm. but, We've seen quite a bit. What's your What's your most favorite or most uh, like unique one that you think you've seen? Uh, IG Eleven was the most unique. You one saw an IG Eleven, isn't that what? No, K Two S O. That's what it was. K Two S O is the one from, that I saw yep. from uh, Rogue One. From Rogue One, that was the most unique. I one saw I've a seen. Grogu. Yes, we saw Grogu. An what Emperor Palpatine. Oh, our animator. Hers was Lady from Lady yes. and the Tramp. That was. Jiminy I yelled Cricket. at her saying, "What's your character?" <laughs> Because I've been so excited about this. The thing that's cool, too, is it's been such a good... I feel like it's a better... And this is the whole purpose, right? It's a better conversation starter with yeah. the cast members than than the, like, city cities right. that they had had. So it'd be, I'd be curious, and we'll see. We'll find out in the future, right? Do you think they're going to keep... I think they're going to keep the characters over oh, I think it's doing great. the cities. I think the cities are interesting. You know, where they're yeah. from is interesting, but... There's a cool like connection that you can make with these people talking about the characters. Or like you're talking to a security guard, his was Scar, but he was actually saying if he could have chosen any characters, he would have chosen I it was Sergeant Tibbs was the one that he really wanted to choose. And Tag's like, Who's Sergeant Tibbs? You you know what's funny? One of the cast members at Lamplight had Sergeant Tibbs. No, really? Yes. You can't tell the security guard that it's right. gonna be very sad. But he was saying that they keep changing the list, so I think that that's oh, probably what happened to him. Oh, that could be. Was when he chose, they probably wasn't Didn't on the list. On there. By the way, if you see a cast member with Mickey, it's possible they chose Mickey, but it's also the default. Like yeah, so Mickey's... Our, like Amy mm-hmm. said that she didn't pick quick enough, and so she got Mickey Mouse by default. Yeah, but who did she say she... Who did she tell us she would have chosen? What did she say that she, she would have chosen? She told us who she would have chosen. Now I don't remember. Because then she was asking us who we would choose. Who would you choose? I said we had to do a spur of the moment, so she wasn't letting me overthink. I said Wally. You said Wally's um, cute. K two S O probably. No, you didn't say K two S O. You said Obi Wan. Obi Wan, yes, Obi Wan. We did see an Obi Wan as well. We did. In fact, as we left Lamplight, there was a guy mm-hmm. that had an Obi Wan. Mm-hmm. 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 So I like it. I think it would get them to show their we, personality, we like you were talked saying. To somebody in guest services, hers was Roz. That was good. <gasps> she did the voice. And then even. she did the voice for Roz. It was great. So, anyways. You guys are if you come and the characters please it has been so fun take take a moment out of your busy day to just kind of look at the cast members name tags and start a, you know start a conversation or just say oh that's so cool that you picked Roz or you know I love Roz or whatever because every time we've done that the cast members have just it brings like a smile to their face yes. and like like I said it, it starts a really great conversation with them so it's been super super fun highly recommend so a couple things I think we should do, do some show follow-up with is one of the things we talked about at length when the Disney 100 started was the decorations. Mm, yeah. And so I would like to say, first off, positives. 
Everything's purple, which <laughs> is I'm in heaven because yes. I love purple. Uh, a lot of the the banners and stuff down Main Street, that royal purple they have, amazing. All the banners we're looking at right now with the movies and stuff listed on them, amazing. The name tags we've already talked about, also really awesome. The medallions. The medallions are a little disappointing. I was hoping that they were going to look better in sunlight, and some of them, some of them do. The the big one here at DCA, when the sun's hitting it, you do see the iridescent. But all of the small ones just kind of are like a, a flat silver. Yeah. They're not iridescenty. And the and monorail wrap looks just as amazing in yes. person as it does on video. The, the monorail it looks sunshine one hundred percent because yeah. when we were here and it was yesterday and we were seeing it in like overcast the cloudy overcast not as good the sunshine it just like it like it's like it sings it's just like oh so good so good we haven't spent too this is weird we haven't spent too much time in front of the castle but from what i can see of castle decorations i'm a little the my favorite part is still the fountains 100 percent, my favorite yeah. part is still the fountains i'm a little underwhelmed underwhelmed i guess would be a good way of saying it for the the rest of it but Maybe again, maybe it was intentional. Maybe when we get to see the Wonder Sterney show uh, projected on the castle, maybe maybe there's something different about it because of that. I, who knows? We'll find out. Yeah. So, couple things for the next episode. So this is for this week because we're going to still be in the parks when this is posted on Wednesday. We've got Star Wars Night still coming up on the fourth. We're very mm-hmm. very excited. Because tonight actually is the first Star it Wars is. night, and there is a bunch of people walking around with lightsabers and kind of some costumes. And kind cloaks. of to go on that, we just again with our animation class that we just got out of Grogu. I mean, super popular character, right? But I think the combination of that with Star Wars night, it was a full, it was a full animation class. I've never been not a single empty in seat. a full animation class before. Me that either. was amazing. Yeah. So that's obviously making thing. Like I said, a lot of people wearing Star Wars stuff. Uh, there's kind of like a cool, like nerdy buzz in the air about Star Wars. I don't know. I'm really excited to to go in Star a couple Wars nights. Star Wars is just top of mind. We also have. I'm not going to tell you specifically what it is, but we have a really cool opportunity we that we're going to talk fun about. Surprise! That we're going to talk about next week. And in fact, if you're following us on social surprise. media, you'll probably already know it because I'm sure we're going to post about it. If if you're not following us on social media, you're going to want to because we've got like jam-packed amazing magic coming your way yeah i'm like getting goosebumps right now just think i gotta we gotta stop talking about it yeah. otherwise i'm gonna say it it's gonna be really but cool i, I think oh, you guys are gonna be excited to very, hear about very it incredible. again if you're following our social media look out on instagram because we're gonna have some stuff posted there so you can find out early but uh yeah so it's it's gonna be a really cool experience again meeting up with weekly tears has been a highlight for mm-hmm. us uh it's really nice to meet we've, some we've of you bumped guys into a couple people in the parks they yes. stopped us and said hello which we love we absolutely love stopping and chatting and we have if, if you don't know this if you haven't met us in person yet or haven't seen us in the parks one of the fun things that we like to do of course yes chat do you know that fun stuff but we also have a fun button that we give to every weekly tier that meets us in person it doesn't matter if you meet us at the meetup or if you see us in the park, or if maybe you've spotted us at D23, we always carry these special official weekly tier buttons with us. And the only way to get one of these buttons is to meet meet us us in person. So we feel very fortunate. And if you ever see anyone wearing one of these buttons or has one of these buttons, that's how you get the button is you get to, by meeting us in person. So if you see us, please don't ever feel shy or like you can't say hello. We want you to say hello and we want to give a little gift to you as well. Yeah, we were sitting outside the uh, the Web Slinger store mm-hmm. today, and we were waiting for James and Vern to get done looking at something, and there was this family sitting right next to us, and yep. they're like, take a Teresa yeah. from Deal Weekly? We're like, yes. They're like, oh, we listened. That is so cool. <laughs> and in fact, so they cool. had seen us um, earlier, but they didn't want to like come bother us, they said. Yep. I think it was part of the Not so, a bother at all. Yeah, not a bother at all. Always come say hi. Like I said, we met so many new people at the meetup this time. Mm-hmm. Um, it was great meeting all you guys. Some of you guys traveled just to come meet us, we, and that was amazing. It's, it's one of those things that it's like a pinch. Like, I just, it's incredible. And I, I still can't wrap. We've been doing this for almost six years. I still cannot wrap my head around it that so many people enjoy what we're doing. And it's just, it's amazing. It's not, you know, we just do this because we love it. Just like all of you guys love Disneyland, love the history, love the parks. And so this has never felt like work for us. So it's ne- so it's just incredible that people 
I don't know. I, I just think so Enjoy incredible it and support us and everything. Enjoy it, support us, listen, all that, you know, follow on it, you know, whatever. All the stuff. It's just, it's incredible. And we're just so grateful and we're just so thankful for all of you. Yeah. Now, a couple things I want to point out. Uh, first of all, easy stuff. If you do want to support us, one of the ways you can do so is you can write a review on your podcast app of choice. Anywhere you can leave a review, we'd love to see. Yeah. Uh, we love getting reviews and reading them. I always get excited when I see there's a new review because I do <laughs> I do check it every other day or so, and I love seeing um, reviews and uh, good and bad. To be honest with you, I just we just like hearing feedback on social media. We love hearing from you guys. Yes. Teresa answers. Tons of messages on social media, on Instagram, so fun. Facebook. So never, never be afraid uh, to put it in a comment or send us a direct message. We mm-hmm. love hearing from you guys. We um, read them all. If you want to financially support us, like as a one time, you can uh, buy us a churro, which you can do at dlweekly.net slash churro. And you can do that in a bunch of different amounts. Or if you want to support us long term, you can do so on Patreon at dlweekly.net slash support. And you get access to our Discord chat. We send you out some swag. Teresa handwrites a nice card. (laughs) And I sign it so she does all the work for it. (laughs) Uh, But she puts a lot of effort into that. And so, yeah. So you get all that cool stuff. And then as you stay our supporter every year, we have an anniversary gift. So you get extra stuff every year, depending on uh, how long you've been a supporter. So Mm -hmm. there's all this cool stuff that we do. And again, we love seeing you in the parks. And if you can't do any of that stuff, thank you for at least listening. listening is supporting us. Because if you weren't listening... We wouldn't still be doing this if nobody was listening to True. us. There would be, we would just be two Disney nerds talking in a, a studio to each other. So it, it's just <laughs> incredible to think that like our conversation between you know between the two of us gets like listened to so many yeah. different people and enjoyed by so many people. It's just so cool. And also, I want to point out, Vern and James are very excited and happy, and yeah. uh, they feel very thankful that when they've done some Instagram updates for us during this trip. Because they try to come out at least one trip a year with us. Mm -hmm. They really appreciate the positivity that you guys show to them on those posts and sending in trivia every week and everything like that. So, yeah, if you've done any of that stuff, it's really appreciated. They they went to go do stuff because they didn't want to sit here and listen to us podcast (laughs) for an hour because they're in Disneyland. They want to go enjoy it. So as they should. um, But yeah, but they really appreciate it. It's so great to be here all together in the mm-hmm. parks mm-hmm. and I'm sure Vern has written down notes for <laughs> trivia I'm nervous he was taking all sorts of photos in different queues and Uh-oh. I'm like oh no these oh. are going to become very specific trivia questions there might be a return of what queue am I in could be so no this was like easter eggs in queues oh goodness yeah next week's episode is going to be all about our Star Wars yes. night trip and also we forgot to mention we're going to Disney Anna this weekend and so we're going to talk There's about too our much experience happening this at trip. the Disney Anna event this weekend so next week is going to be all about Star Wars night all about our time at the Disney Anna event the following week will be our big surprise announcements I know I feel so bad that we're making you wait an extra week but we felt that the Star Wars night and Disney Anna event were a little bit more time sensitive than, yeah. than our big thing but Social media, beyond social media, for sure. So the other thing coming out this month is if you are a supporter at the cast member level or above, you get access to a bonus episode every month. And this month's bonus episode, we actually, on our very last day, we had a little bit extra time. So we're actually going to go over to Knott's Berry Farm. We are. Which I haven't been forever. And it's my first time ever. We with went, rides. We, yeah, we went there rides. for the boys yep. very fast, but that's it. My first time experience Knott's in, in all of Knott's glory. I'm really excited to ride like the calico mine train mm-hmm. and walk someone more told around. me that the log flume ride might be closed yeah. so we might not be able to experience that but we'll experience everything that we can except those big terrifying rides producer james is going my to, feet are going to be firmly on the ground yeah we're <laughs> gonna have, have a good time ghost though town and all that yeah so yeah. we're excited yeah so we'll talk all about that on the modus episode so if you're interested in that that'll be coming out later this month or later yeah this month we're in may now officially so yeah Well, thank you, everyone. We will be back next week with more Disneyland news and information. But until then, we are going to go out and enjoy the parks. Please remain seated until the podcast comes to a complete stop and the doors have opened. Then collect your belongings, watch your head, and step carefully from the episode. On behalf of all of our crew, thanks for traveling with us. And we hope you have a happy and memorable visit here at DL Weekly.